I mean, I'll introduce yeah. you as a group and then. Sure. Great, we can. All right, congratulations. We've made it to our last session of the day here at the uh, FAST Gala Educational Summit. Uh, I'm Sharon Wild Chalker from the FAST Board. And the last talk is Real Life with Ryan, a team therapy approach that works. We've, we're lucky enough to have the team coordinated uh, works with um, Ryan, who's the son of Elizabeth and Ben O'Connor. Uh, the people we have speaking uh, today are Julie Conway, an occupational therapist, Jan Marsden Johnson, uh, a speech therapist, and Beth Ann Solom, who's a physical therapist. So I'm going to let them take it from here. I don't. Th I don't have my phone. I forgot. Oh, I have a watch. Okay, it's two forty. Okay. You want it? Okay, I got it. All right. Can everybody hear? Yes. Okay. Um, I give you a round of applause for managing to last this long. And when I go to conferences and I have to sit here for this long, I'm ready to shoot myself by the time I get to this point in the day. So, you guys deserve an extra special round of applause for that. Um, this is going to be a very simple, feel-good um, presentation. I think sometimes Angelman can be very um, depressing, and sometimes it can be overwhelming. And we are lucky that we have our very special angel with us. Ryan is going to be walking around, and he's going to be <laughs> participating in our presentation. So please just say hi to him when he heads your direction, because he probably will. And um, we're just going to get started. We have been working with Ryan since he was pretty little. And it's really a thrill to work with Ryan and his family. Uh-oh. Oh, there we go. So this is Ryan's story. It's really um, the story of Ryan and his family. His little sister, Patty, is here, too, somewhere. Um, as well as his parents and his grandparents, and really it is a whole family approach, and we are very, very happy to be part of Ryan's family and part of his team. Um, Ryan was diagnosed with Angelman when he was about 18 months old, and at that time his parents were told that he was not going to walk, but he is. Uh, they said he was not going to talk, but he is, and he's well on his way to living a fairly independent life, which is um, credit to Ryan and to his family. We're just going to give you a little bit of our team um, philosophy, because I think it's something, we were listening to the uh, presentation in the other room earlier today, and I think that's something that is really good for everybody to keep, keep in your head. Every day is not a good day, but every day has good pieces. And our reality with Ryan, as we've been going through this journey with him, is that, um, if you, you can read it, we don't focus on the big things, because sometimes the big things seem overwhelming. Uh, but if you focus on the little things, then the big things happen. And that's what we have found. Oh, Ryan's going to join us on stage. <laughs> um, that's what we found, that every single victory that we can celebrate is worth celebrating. And we take time to celebrate all of our victories because they're really important. And that's what makes life valuable. So this is Ryan when he was little. Um, he wasn't any different than any other baby. He just had to work a little harder to get where he is today. Um, but he also had a lot more people cheering him on, and there's something to be said for that. These are things that we've been working on a lot, and Elizabeth asked me to mention this just because I'm the speech piece of the team. Um, some pe I didn't realize, because I'm kind of dumb, I guess, but the same muscles that we use for eating we use for talking. So a lot of things that we do with Ryan are two-dimensional. We need him to be able to eat. We need him to be able to talk. We need him to be able to do a lot of different things. And it can be hard, but it can be fun. And um, Ryan has really made a tremendous amount of progress um, working on very functional but very fun activities. There's nothing that we do, and that no therapist tell you that there's anything that they do that is magical, 
that is really super smart. We know what we do because we went to school to do it, but a lot of what we do is really common sense, and if it makes sense to you, then we're doing our job. If we're doing things that absolutely make no sense to a parent, then we probably shouldn't be doing it unless we can explain why. And I think as parents, your gut feeling is what you should go with, because generally, you're right. So these are some beginning pictures. You can see Ryan's not happy. I have to say I was his least favorite therapist. And his um, mother's least favorite therapy session at first. And his <laughs> least favorite therapy session, pretty much. Elizabeth would come every week and cry, and Ryan would come every week and cry, and it was miserable, I have to say. It was pretty miserable. But now, um, Ryan loves me, and Elizabeth is starting to like me. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not so bad as it was. Um, but we had did a lot of really heavy, heavy duty work to do on Ryan's mouth. Ryan's mouth was very uncooperative, um, and he didn't really like a lot of things that we did to his mouth. But again, you look at some of the progression between the sucking, the eating, and we're going to show you some videos in a little bit. Um, and this is me working with Julie, where he's doing the self-feeding, where he has the spoon and he's holding his cottage cheese. Um, the other thing that Ryan has, um, he follows a very um, strict well, I have to deviate every once in a while, but 99% of the time he's following a very strict low glycemic diet. And so we use everything that we can. And I had to learn to do a lot of what I do with different foods for Ryan because I couldn't use my traditional stuff. So we had to get very creative. And Elizabeth and I had to work through a lot of different things because I'm like, well, I need something chewy. I need something this, and I need something that. So we had to kind of go through what the options were because we really needed to use a lot of food. Plus, Ryan really likes to eat. That's one of the things that he really enjoys doing. Um, so it was worth it to us to figure out a lot of these things as we went along. Oh, the other thing I have to tell you is that I'm a very picky person. Um, and one of the other things that's been very important for us is that Ryan learned to be very polite. When kids go out to eat, I don't like kids that have a mess at the table. I don't think there's any expectation that your kid's allowed to throw food or have food falling out of their mouth. So one of the things that we've been really working on and encouraging for Ryan is that he's a neat eater, but he's a safe eater. Um, so let me show you this first video. I think you can see it. This is me and Julie, and what you can see that we're doing, if you look at his pointer finger. The reason we're using his pointer finger is to suck off the peanut butter because we need him to work on that mouth. Uh, but we also need him to use his pointer finger to access his talker. So there's multiple reasons for every single thing that we do. And Ryan is tolerating a lot of input. There's two of us basically on his back at this point. Uh, but can you see how his pointer finger comes out? It didn't used to. He used to just have a big raking motion, but now he can isolate that finger and he's using it not just for the peanut butter, but he's using it for accessing his talker as well. He's also using a lot of signs, and you'll see some of those later, and some of the gestures that he's using, um, because he has the competition of having a little sister I don't, she's not actually in that video, but most of the time when Ryan's in therapy, uh, Patty's there too. So he's got competition to make sure that he gets what he wants because he doesn't necessarily like to share it with Patty and vice versa. So he's had a lot of things that he's had to learn in a very practical way. And this next picture is... Another thing about this video though is right now I'm holding the peanut butter, but eventually we start getting Ryan holding the peanut butter with his left hand, and then so we're doing some bilateral tasks, which I really want him to start using both of those hands together, and he's doing a great job with it. Yes, the next picture you can see, this is one of his not low glycemic treats. <laughs> but there was a reason that he needed to have a lollipop. It's because if you can look at how controlled he is, his bite reflex has been extinguished. He's playing with me now. He's pretending to give me his lollipop, but he's not really going to give it to me. Um, but if you can see his lip closure, he's isolating his tongue. And when Ryan walks up to me and just about everyone else these days, he vocalizes. He clicks his tongue. He says, mmm. He's walking around talking. Um, and he actually is very intentional. As we heard in the presentation earlier, the, the communication intent is never 
lacking in a kid with Angelman's. And I, Ryan has more intention than just about anybody. Uh, but again, it was those reflexes that kept holding him back. So when you watch him, he, in fact, actually, just last week in therapy, he managed to eat a whole lollipop without biting it once, which is truly a feat, because I can't do that. I mean, it's just too tempting, but Ryan can. So these are some of the tricks that Elizabeth asked me to make sure I commented on. Um, Thicket, if you guys don't use it, is a really, really, really good thing to use. A lot of times, especially for younger kids, they don't have the swallowing abilities to manage liquid. Um, Thicket makes any kind of liquid, water, juice, anything safe for it. It does exactly what it says. It makes it thick. Now, Ryan, on some days, is made to suck things that are really hard because again I want him to suck because I need those muscles to get stronger and more coordinated and I need him to work he'd rather not sometimes but that's not really an option the other thing that Ryan always has to use because I'm kind of mean that way is that he's not allowed to use any sippy cups they're just not okay so if any of you have sippy cups <laughs> get rid of them go to straws and put thicket in your cups with your straws and you will see immediately better oral motor functioning. Um, these are some of the other tips you saw on the video, uh, you saw in some of the videos and you'll see later that, like I said, eating and talking is something that happens all together. There's not a first you do this and then you do this. This is something that just happens all the time. Ryan is, has been communicating since he was born. Um, there's not one best method of communication. So if anyone says to you, oh, I, my child's using this, you should use this, absolutely be open to any options, but please look at all options and don't rule out anything. There is never going to be one communication system that will work for your child. There is not going to be something that's better that will be what works for you, and it is not going to necessarily be the same as what works for the kid at the next table. So please just Look at all the options, consider all the options, and go with what you think is the best option. Um, and again, all communication is valued. We're working on so many things with Ryan. Um, I mean, he has gestures, he has faces, he's telling us mine, because he has to do that when he doesn't have his talker, because otherwise Patty takes his stuff. So, and it's better for him to say mine and Patty walk away than him to whack Patty. So there's, you know, there's a lot of intent in what we're doing with him. But all communication, as valuable it is, can be progressive. And for Ryan, crying used to be his primary means of communication. It's not anymore. He has so many other things that he uses, and it's so much more um, pleasant. That's a good word to use. <laughs> pleasant. Being with Ryan when he's not crying and screaming. That's just, that's not therapy. That's just real life. Um, so now I think we're doing some walking and playing. So, sure. you, yeah. I got it. So okay. um, for OT and PT, Ryan came to us, um, myself, and then we had another physical therapist with us at first. Um, and Ryan was a puzzle. So it was, it was, he was a challenge to us. And I, I remember going on the Angelman website, and and I say this all the time to Elizabeth. I'm like. I saw this great article that said expect more. So immediately we're like, okay, so this child is not sitting yet. He's not crawling, he's not doing anything, but he's going to. He, we expect him to do it all. Um, and Elizabeth was like, okay, I had this baby due in August. I want Ryan walking by then. Well, that didn't happen, but it wasn't long after that, right? It was pretty close. It was, I mean, it's just been amazing. So our goal has been, Ryan came to us always in extension, always pushing back. Um, and, you, and you'll see um, just teaching him and through repetition over and over how to balance that extension with the flexion um, and, and doing a lot of stability. Um, do you want to do the first clip? Yeah. So in the green outfit. This is about where he was this time last year. He was not walking. No, maybe it was a bit past this. Uh, but he was not walking when we came to the conference last year. So if you can look, that was the first one where he's barely standing up. Just this no stability at all. <clears throat> we finally got him then to learn a little bit of the gait pattern, foot in front of the other. But you can see our other physical therapist, Bridget, was um, a lot of stability, and Ryan did not and like even it. Even with the Cheerios, Ryan was not really that happy. And then this was the 
first steps. Which <laughs> made our day, made, our, made it. I mean, it was just and, amazing. And now you see him. You see Elizabeth just, in the background there. If he'd sit down every once in a while, we'd be okay. But he's really liking the walk. <laughs> so go ahead. Um, so I think, yeah. Sure. So um, I came in. I was lucky enough to join this group um, at the end of the summer. And Ryan had just started to walk. And the first time I met Ryan, he came into um, the clinic. And he took several steps and kind of fell right into Julie. And, you know, everyone was so happy he was walking, but I could see that, you know, we needed to take that piece, that walking piece, and give him some stability so he could be functional. Um, so right now, what we're focusing on with Ryan is giving him that stability, trying again, like Julie said, to balance the flexion and extension to give him some graded muscle movement, because before it was sort of like, he, you use momentum, he would get going, but he couldn't stop. He couldn't stop to pick up a toy and functionally do something. Or carry a toy. Or carry a toy. So this is, and these are the next videos. This one is from Halloween this year. This is Ryan and Patty, the lion, chasing him. I think the best thing about the three of us and is that we are always talking, we're always communicating. So whatever team of people you have, get them talking. I do a session a week with Jan and then Beth Ann, and we're always communicating back and forth. Now you can see Ryan walking. You can't hear in the video, Elizabeth maybe turn it off, but Elizabeth's telling him to fly and then she's making him come back. And the, not that I'm, I love Patty, Patty loves me, but did you see how Patty fell down in that video, not Ryan? That's not bad, huh? Now this is another example of Ryan, he's talking to me, can you see his mouth moving? He's talking and, but he's got his talker in his hand, that's what he's holding. It's just his, it's an iPad, he uses the Touch Chat app and he's pretty good. Um, but he's telling me he's ready to go home, so then he picks it up and, and that's the combination of the speech and the OT to, and the PT and everything together, holding it, communicating, walking. The expectation is that Ryan will do it all. And Ryan doesn't always want to do it all, but Ryan can, and unfortunately for Ryan, he will. <laughs> <laughs> so this is more Julie. So, oh, I don't know what I did then. For OT, just, a lot of Ryan was able to grasp it and went straight to his mouth. Everything straight to his mouth. Um, and it has been a long time coming. We've got him releasing. Nothing goes in his mouth anymore at all. Except for food. If food. Appropriate things go in Ryan's mouth. That's it. Now. He's amazing. Um, but it's repetition, repetition. We have all been on him, teaching him over and over, put it in, you know, do whatever. Um, working with the hands in midline and this then is it, and then I think the next one is these are not videos these are just pictures so you can explain. you can see in the first picture Ryan's like this leaning over to, to drink and I'm like ah pick up the thing um, and then the next picture his hands at midline and we're working on his pincer grasp and he has got the best pincer grasp ever it's amazing so we got it right we're going left um, and I think we have a video of that too sensory integration is a big thing um, Ryan loves to bounce he loves to move he loves to swing um, we'll do anything to give him a little bit of input to help get him organized um, so that he can then focus on the activity we need to do. And we are almost done. You guys are doing great. This is, again, I put in here the slide because teamwork is a family affair. Truly, it is a family. This, the O'Connor family is an incredible family from grandparents to cousins to aunts. They are all aunts. involved with this kid. <laughs> <laughs> and they welcome everybody for their contribution. But the other thing that I think is so important is there's so many days when Ryan is just Ryan. Ryan is not Ryan with Angelman syndrome. Ryan is just a big brother. And you say just because that seems like an impossible thing that he can be a big brother, but he is. Um, Ryan is just a little kid who's so excited that dad's coming home from work and he's jumping up and down by the door. Ryan's an airplane walking around on Halloween and collecting his candy. Um, so there's a lot of things that we take, rejoice in, the simple, simple things that make life worth living that I think make it worth all the effort that Ryan has to put in to have this success that he's having and truthfully, we're all enjoying it. So this last couple videos, you can see Patty right there. Now if you watch carefully, Ryan is signing, he's, that's his me. And sometimes he's a little more aggressive with his me because Patty's not <laughs> quite getting the hint. But most of the time he's 
using his me. He has a very, very <sighs> clear yes ask. and no when he doesn't have his talker, but 90% of the time he's got his talker there. And can you see how he's shaking his head because Julie's saying to him, is it your turn? And he's like, no, it's not my turn, it's Patty's turn. It's like, yes, it's Patty's turn. And he's really being a nice big brother. And I said, oh, that was such a nice thing. You're such a good big brother. So that was why he came and looked at me. But can you see the pincer grasp there? With, with his hands separated and he's just out. just pulling Beautiful. it out. And again, that's when we're using everything we have all at the same time to make it work for him. And then this last picture, this last video, is when we're, we're doing, we do other things other than eat, not much, but no, I'm kidding, we do. <laughs> um, so we're reading books, and he now is able to pull Velcro pictures off. It was kind of like that literacy concept. Brian will read, he will write, um, and he certainly is communicating. So he's pulling, we're singing at Old MacDonald's farm, and he's pulling off all the animals and putting them on the Velcro on the farm. Ryan's um, got tells. When he doesn't want to do it, that nose, it starts rubbing it back and forth or a little bit of extension. So we say, oh, fine, Ryan, just a couple more and then you're good to go. Um, but those are basically, we didn't want to make this complicated. You guys have had a lot of information thrown at you. Um, we're really normal therapists. There's nothing about us that is exceptional except for we have an exceptional family to work with and an exceptional little boy. And there is hope. You can find a team that you like, and I think that's also something else that Elizabeth has figured out. If you don't like your therapy team, don't work with them. There's lots of us out there. Find people that you like, find people that you trust, and find people that go that understand what your goals are for your child because that's truly the most important thing. Can, and communicate. Just really work making sure that they're all talking to each other. So, oh, and I should mention Ryan does go to school. He has a really <laughs> good school team that we work collaboratively with, which is really helpful. Um, there, that's a, isn't that a great picture? <laughs> isn't that a great Halloween costume? I mean, really, that's the best. And then there's just a few more pictures of, like I said, Ryan doing a whole bunch of different things. And that's it. Does anyone have any questions? Yes. You touched on it briefly, but what is your best advice for mouthing? At anything my son gets, food or not food, it's directly going straight to his mouth. Well, we do a lot of oral motor work. Elizabeth really tolerated me really, really pushing the oral motor stuff. Um, a lot of times we find kids mouth things because they need the stimulation in their mouth and they're, they basically don't know what their mouth is. It's like a big black hole. So a lot of times we give do really heavy duty biting, chewing, sucking. Vibrating toys. Vibrating toys, lots and lots of input to the mouth, and then appropriate things that they can eat. And that's what we basically have been doing with Ryan, that anything that's not appropriate, it's, Elizabeth? Also, I think, I was surprised, I used to assume that every food would go to his mouth, but I think he is putting much less in his mouth than he should be. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I think that I just thought that was a given that yeah. everything would go to his mouth, but I've seen less of it as this has been more stimulated. He and he's also he busy is. doing other things with his mouth now. He really yeah. spends a lot of the time making noises and talking, so his mouth is busy doing other things other than seeking that input because he's because he's able to do things other than just bite and think of like I always tell the people I work with crunchy food chewy food straws as much as you can get that mouth active so that they don't seek it out with inappropriate things thank you sure have any other questions any other questions Over the Um, I have a question. Um, you were talking about getting them to slow down their momentum. Our daughter just started walking, um, and she likes to run pretty much, and then she's tripping and, you know, falling over. Um, how did you get him to slow down his momentum? So we work a lot, um, when Julie and I work together, on purposeful tasks. So we'll sort of give him a reason to stop. So if, you know, if we have something going between the two of us, you know, I'll say, like Julie will say, Ryan, go get this piece of this puzzle from Beth Ann. And it gives him sort of a target, but at the same time, you know, it's, it's a relatively short distance. He has to come retrieve something, stop, 
you know, turn and go back or stop and pick something up. So it's, it's make, about making his walking very functional. And we do this over and over, short distance. We're probably five feet apart, but just teaching him, go stop, go stop. And, and it's amazing because, you know, again, I've been with the team a relatively short amount of time. And in that time frame, you know, he went from basically falling into someone to now if we say, you know, go and pick up a red ball off the floor, he can walk over, squat, pick it back up, you know, and he may shuffle a little, but he can maintain that center of gravity and maintain his balance, make a turn and come back. And it's just tons and tons of repetition and tons of really purposeful tasks. Okay, and one more question. Um, how did you get him to grasp and hold on to something while walking? Well, that's all of us doing that. Um, it's he just, didn't really have a choice. Yeah. <laughs> we just kept putting it in his hand and expecting him to walk with it because one of the things that I didn't want was when Ryan walking around like this to balance, and he did at first. Uh, but then we needed his hands to come down because that's how we walk. I didn't want him, and I was not allowed about to let him put his iPad around his neck on a strap that was not okay. I'm just, I'm so horrible. But I said, you know what, Ryan can walk and carry this. So we just kept putting it in his hand so and walking, this. and that's what he does now. So Ryan he would drop the it, sidewalk. he would pick it up. But Jan behind him drops it. Ryan, no. Pick, pick it, put it up. Put it in your hand. Go, Ryan, drop it. No, put it back in. Or maybe not a no, but let's do it this way. Right. Um, repetition, everything. And the other thing is now he's really, really in love with his talker. He, he uses the battery up constantly. It's not always purposeful, but he understands that that is his communication device, and he understands its importance. So he's highly motivated to carry it now because over the, over the months, it's become very, very important to him. So there's a different, you know, there's an intrinsic benefit to him at this point to carry it because he wants to. So. I think it's been a combination of things. And just to, to go back a little bit too, you know, one of the things that Julie and I both would do too is as Ryan was walking, like when he was learning how to sort of make that stop, we would give him lots of deep pressure into the floor, lots of deep pressure into his body so he could get a sense of where his center of gravity was. Um, and I think that made a difference Huge. too. I think I'm that all about the really sensory helped. Approach with him. Okay, thank you. Sure. sure. And, my, and Ryan, but I think incorporating that because it is a motivating factor for him, that's helped with um, getting him to slow down, to pick something up. I mean, we use food and PT, so we, I just kind of use whatever works, and that seems to be very motivating for him to do whatever tasks they're asking of him. So um. maybe that's why they thought it was a greater Willie at first. <laughs> <laughs> My child is much older and also very motivated by food, but um, we had trouble over the years with multiple therapists. You know, they kick us out because he won't keep his shoes on and things like that. We've been dismissed from numerous places. What? Really? You can't Sorry. even begin. Um, wow. Long story. Yeah. That's not the real question. Um, he's <laughs> 14 horrible. years old, and um, starting even when he was in the early intervention and things like that, they tried to tell me that he had missed the window um, to learn how to drink out of a straw. And so we still struggle with the only way to get him to drink anything is with a sippy cup. He can drink out of a regular cup, but he has a tendency to pull, um, he'll pull it away from the bottom of his lips so then he spills it. But we do try. And I just wondered, what are your thoughts on that supposed window that I don't like? <laughs> I don't think there's a window. In fact, I'm 100% sure there's not a window. So and shame on just them for keep telling you that. someone who told you yeah. that I don't know where they came from, but she's one of my supervisors for the school system. Well, I'm a special education teacher, so she doesn't yes, know they what promoted she's her for that about. I'm sorry, there is no window. There is no time. <laughs> there is nothing that closes. There's no doors that close. Everything is always open. And really, like I said, functional. If you have something that works, use it. Like I said, there's no reason why you can't keep using straws. Well, and, and keep going to find the person that, I mean, like what Jan was saying, don't stop. I mean, find, keep going, shop around, find Yeah, we therapist. just got dismissed from another group this summer. So well, um, Elizabeth lack of had, progress I'm, is my I'm favorite term. I'm the third term. speech pathologist that Ryan's had. So And we're done. This is it. <laughs> but it, 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 that's okay. I, I, that's okay. You, there are many, many therapists out there, and just because you work with one does not mean it might be awkward changing, but it's like, you know, getting your hair cut with the same person for a long time, and then you're like, oh, I really want to go somewhere else. You have to do what you need to do, and there's no judging. What would be, other than the thicket that you mentioned, what is another 
concept or something that well, I should try next. Well, the straws that don't straw. collapse are really helpful. Sometimes using the, you know, if hard you go plastic. To, well, if you go to go to a fish store or like a pet store, the aquarium tubing oh, yeah. is really nice and thick, and it doesn't collapse when you suck on it. Thick straws that are not collapsible are really, really helpful. Thank you. Yes. You're funny. <laughs> Okay, well, I think we're going to wrap up our afternoon. Thank, thank you, you for, to Thank all you. of you. Thank, thank you, everybody else, for making it through the whole day.